Yes, Mr. Kutampa. Mr. Kutampa. Mr. Katia. Yes, my lord. I believe you admit that the video recording that we've watched show you saying that the petitioner had won the elections. I have watched the video and I've watched it here. I stand by every word, every punctuation, every sentence that relates to me, Johnson Asid Dunkatia. And there is nowhere, unless we are watching different clips, there is nowhere where I indicated definitively that uh, the first respondent has won the elections. What I said was what I, I put in my answer uh, last Friday, that we have won uh, majority of seats in Parliament, um, which is about which figure I put at 141 seats, and that we are cruising. The, the first respondent is cruising for victory, and that is precisely what has shown up in all the various speeches I have made, which have been clipped together. So let's understand, you admit everything on the video coming from your image on the video. From my mouth. Yes. That, those are my pictures. Very well. And those are the words that came yeah. from my mouth. I'm putting it to you that in the video you said, and I quote, the NDC has won 141 seats and that puts us in a clear majority and will be given President Mahama the needed majority in Parliament to be able to conduct his business as President. Yes, ma'am. Did you say that? Those are my words. I'm putting it to you that you thereby imply that President Mahama had won the elections. I imply that I expected President Mahama to win the elections because every evidence was, show, was pointing at President Mohammed's victory. And in fact, my laws, if you permit me, in all the seven parliamentary and presidential elections that have been held in this country before this one, the presidential candidate and the political party which wins and controls parliament ends up winning the, president, the presidency. Please, so Mr. I have... Mr. Sergeant Kati, I don't lecture us. You answer the questions I put to you. You can't lecture us mm -hmm. here. No, it's not lecture. <laughs> We've answered yes. the question. Don't give us a lecture of what happens in politics in Ghana, please. Now... <laughs> Yes, my lord. Please, by way of case management, we want to give you one day to cross examine the witness. Give you. Yes, you have to manage because not more than one, that is the maximum we can give you. Very well. Now, Mr. Sejin Ketia, you will see in the video various clips of your deputy, one Otokuno. Is that correct? Yes, my lord. In the, in the video, Otokuno says, Mahama has won this election by some 6,166,385, and that constitutes 50.15%. Is that not so? I heard him say so in the video, but my lords, I indicated last Friday that 
I was present at the press conferences addressed by my good self and the um, petitioner. And I did indicate clearly that uh, I would not be in a position to testify about whatever any other official of the NDC has said at their various press conferences. That was what I said. Oh, I'm, I'm putting it to you that the press, press conferences that have been shown are press conferences organized by the NDC as a party. Yes, my lord. The NDC has 38,000 branches. Each no. branch can organize a press conference in their own right. And we have regions. Each region can organize press conferences in their own right. And there are national, at national level, we have various departments. They can all organize press conferences in their own right. And the general secretary does not have to be present at all such press conferences. Now, as a general secretary, these press conferences were organized with your consent and knowledge. My Lord, I am the chief executive of the party. So, in that sense, I take some responsibility about whatever happens in the party. But where a statement is made by a junior officer that contradicts what the chief executive has said, it is the chief executive's word that prevails. Now, again, you saw Mr. Sami Jamfi stating that he, introducing the petitioner as president-elect in the video. Yes, my lord, I saw it in the video. Then again, your deputy, who works under you, said, let me announce to all our supporters that you are free to jubilate. You are free to express your excitement because the NDC is forming the next government of the Republic of Ghana. Is that correct? That's correct, my lord. And my lord, I'm not aware of any restrictions on jubilations of the right of party members <laughs> to jubilate over election results anyway. I'm sure this is And then, you are a representative from Ashanti region. Kwame Zou, your regional secretary, said that President Mama will be declared as president-elect of Ghana. And the NDC, historically, whenever NDC gets more than 25% in Ashanti, they go to the Flagstar House. Yes, my lord, I heard it. So I'm putting it to you, Mr. Asiedin Ketia, that the thrust of all these statements in the various clips is that President Mahama had won the 2020 presidential election. Yes. My Lord, these statements, according to the videos, were made at different times. I think I have been I think I have when they were made. Some of them were made after declaration, some before declaration, and so on. So it is difficult to put all such together and say that at this point, this was what was said. No, I'm putting it to you that these statements were made before declaration. My Lord, my viewing of the video indicates that some of the statements were made after declaration. Even better. And I'm, 
So you admit that some of the statements saying that the petitioner had won the elections were made after the declaration. Not so. From what I not have, so. From what I have watched here with everybody here, I can see that this is not a video of one event. These are videos taped and pieced together. And some of them relate to a time period before declaration and others relate to a time period after declaration. Now, it is no secret that interspersed between these press conferences, the NDC, under your direction, had organized several demonstrations in Accra, stating that the petitioner had won the election and warning the first respondent not to subvert the will of the people. My Lord, the NDC had organized several demonstrations with three main objectives. One, please, I've not asked you the killing that. of innocent please. voters at polling stations by security officers. And nothing please, seemed to be happening. Answer the my NDC question. made, uh, uh, the, that was one of the purposes of the, of the press conference. The other purpose of the press conference. Please, I have not asked you the purpose, so answer my question. Please, and don't be taking instructions. Can you restate Don't your, be taking instructions from, you know, lawyers on this side. Please. Uh, uh, please, let's observe. Please. Decom, please, please. My Lord, I know what I'm talking about. We are closer about. to them than you. Yeah. We've not witnessed anything. Please, 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 please. <laughs> Yes, please answer my question and don't, you had your opportunity to write your witness statement. So now you answer the questions. You understand? Please, I'm asking the question again and I answer according to my ability and what I consider to be the answer to the question. I'm saying that interspersed between these press conferences, yes, the NDC, organized a series of demonstrations, the object of which was to... Tin is loaded. You see, it is Stop. double barrack. <laughs> Can't well, you break them? Organize a number of demonstrations. Is that so? Yes, we did. And one of the clear objectives of these demonstrations was that the petitioner had won the elections and the EC should not subvert the will of the people. My Lord, the objective that relates to the presidential elections was that the results as declared were flawed. And the commission itself has accepted that no, no, no. the results were flawed and that's why they kept changing the figures. So you admit that you said that the results were flawed. Yes. Who, in your view, won the results? The e elections? My Lord. Who? We are not interested in winning or losing a flawed election. Very well. We want the election, we want to be winners of an election that is credible. Now, it is also true that notwithstanding all these statements that your party, yourself, and the petitioner had made that the petitioner had won the election, when you eventually filed your petition, there was nothing in the petition about the petition having won the election. My Lord, I have indicated earlier. No, please answer my question. Please, I'm about to answer the question, unless you are not ready to listen to the answer. I've asked you <laughs> that when you filed the petition. Yes, my Lord. Yes. There was nothing in it to the effect that the petitioner had won the election. In the petition, yes. Now, again, 
you claim in one of your statements that elections were won in the polling stations all over the country. So I'm putting it to you that when you make the statement that the petitioner had won the election, it presupposed that you had the the the, 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 the police station pink sheets. My Lord, I indicated that I never in, I never said that the petitioner had won elections. Now, when the petitioner was telling the whole nation that the NDC had won both the parliamentary and presidential elections. On what basis was he making that statement? Mr. Uh, 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 you can address on it. Yes. You can address on it. Now, now I believe that as you had admitted during cross-examination on Friday that you had trained agents at all the various polling stations and constituency coalition stations and the regional centers. Is that correct? That's correct, my lord. Yeah. Now, they are all entitled to carbon copy of all the different official election documents of the results. Yes, my lord, they are entitled to. And I presume that in some cases they were denied. You know that you have not stated this important factor in your witness statement. You know that as a fact. My Lord, I'm answering to you a question that has been asked. Yes, I'm, I'm saying that, and I'm following up, that you know that this important allegation, you have not mentioned it in your witness statement. Yes, I have not mentioned it in my And the petitioner also has not mentioned it in his petition. My Lord, we indicated that that is what ought to be, but as to whether what ought to be was what happened was another matter. I indicated it clearly. I'm in my saying, response. no, you are answering a different question. I'm saying that if you look into the petition, or you look at the petition, nowhere does the petitioner say what you are alleging. Yes, but I Good. said it in response to an answer last Friday. Now, I'm putting it to you that the only evidence of election results that you, 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 you have attached is your exhibit B exhibit A is the declaration exhibit B, the press release. Exhibit C, the 11 constituency summary sheets. Exhibit D, the summary sheet of Eastern Region. Exhibit E, the 275 constituency summary sheets, which you describe as a spreadsheet of the constituency summary sheets released by first respondent on his website. Yes, my lord, I indicated that we chose to rely on electoral, uh, the first uh, respondent's own figures, thereby judging them by their own Bible. So it means that you accept the information on those documents of the first respondent. The information suggests... No, 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 I've asked you a simple question. You are saying that you accept the information in those documents as the documents of the election. 
that's for electoral uh, first respondents at, uh, account. Do you accept or do you not accept? That's the question you have been asked. My Lord, if you can uh, no, ask no, the question. It's the same question. That's what? That you accept the information in the documents that you have attached. My Lord, I've been advised my, by my lawyers that that is the information. However, no, no, we are not Lord, talking, it please, is. We are not talking about what. Don't look there, please. We are not talking. <laughs> we, are, we are not talking about what your lawyers advise you on. We are talking about you. Yes. So what do you have to say, my Lord? Because we disagree with the data. That's why we are here. But you are using the same data to, in support of your claim. My Lord, the data must be internally consistent. Say that the declaration must be seen to be the product of uh, aggregation of the data. And we are entitled as a participating party to look at the data available to us from which the first respondent drew her conclusion. And we are saying that the data they have submitted does not support the conclusions that have been drawn. And that is why we are here. Now, you see, you will have not. Please look at me, please. So that you don't ask me I should repeat the question again. Look at me. <laughs> now, you have not provided any document of your own showing that neither party won the elections. My Lord, Please, it's a the documents it's a we are working question. with, the information we are working with, is the result that has been declared by the... No, that is okay. I'm saying, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. that you, the General Secretary, mm -hmm. who was directing and coordinating the presidential elections, you have not produced a single piece of independent evidence supporting your claim that neither party won the elections? Simple question. My Lord, I need to understand what independent means so that I can proceed to, to answer the question. Independent by way of NDC's own collated figures no. or what type the, of independence? The carbon, you see, as you know, mm -hmm. all the documents that the EC was using to, uh, how do you call it, collate the results from the polling station right up to the regional uh, center, you had carbon copies of them, didn't you? Yes, we do. And I'm saying that you have not put together your carbon copies to show that indeed nobody won the elections. Yes, my lord, because that is not the purpose of our uh, of our petition. So, so, so you say what is not the purpose? I'm saying that we did not come to court to come and take over the work of electoral commission. But we are entitled, if we see the results are flawed, they are not born out of no. uh, the data, we are entitled to challenge and to insist that That's we must case. have a credible resource that, and a declaration that is based on the votes that were cast at the polling stations. That's okay. I'm saying that you have not provided any basis of your own for your call for a runoff. That's no, my lord, we haven't brought that data here. We didn't consider it necessary to our case to bring any such data here. You see, do you know why? 
you haven't brought any sad document. It is because all the documents you have, all the authentic documents on the election that you have, show that the second respondent had won the election, so you can't bring it out. That is not so, my lord, because we produce documents that will support the case we bring to this court. And if the case we have brought to this court is not about coming to retabulate uh, figures the way MPP chose to do in 2013, and we do not need to bring those figures here. We are judging the first respondent by her own Bible. So the figures that she claimed were the figures that were generated and the conclusions that were drawn. We are saying that the conclusions are not born out of the figures she herself has presented. So, Mr. Sedin Kutia, I'm saying that indeed your claim for a rerun between the second respondent and the petitioner is based on the verbal slip made by the chairperson of the first respondent. In mentioning the total votes cast, rather than the total valid votes cast, as a basis of determining the percentages. My Lord, do you understand the question? Please ask if you, if you think I don't understand it. Can you repeat it? Yes. I'm saying that your claim for the rerun is based for, is based on the simple slip, verbal slip, that the chairperson of the first respondent made when he was announcing, declaring the results, in using the total votes cast rather than the total valid vote to determine the percentages. Is that not correct? My Lord, we disagree that it's a verbal slip. No, because a verbal slip in, in, in reading out figures would have meant that you read one figure instead of the other. But the, the, from subsequent corrections that the first respondent sought to bring up, the figure she mentioned and the correction that was made was not related to the uh, figures of the day at all. Because if you have you maybe total votes cast documents? in one column and then total valid votes in another column, it is possible that you read total valid votes for total votes cast. But they will be the same thing. So when you come back to allege that it was a verbal slip, we expect that the correction that you will make will relate to the figure which you thought you, should, you were reading. But the corrections that they claimed were, uh, were, were, were made did not relate, the, the so-called corrected figure, did not relate to any figure that was on the face of the declaration in the first place. So it was a new figure also introduced. So it, can, it couldn't have been any verbal slip. You see, Mr. Nketiah, you know, as an experienced player in elections in the Fourth Republic, that you determine who wins the presidential elections based on the total number of valid votes passed. Do you know that? Yes, I do. And you know also that it is completely impermissible for anyone to use the total number of votes cast as a basis of determining the percentages. You also know that? Yes, I do. Now, you also know that if you look at, if you listen to the, the, your exhibit, A, that is a, the, the press conference declaring who won the elections. If 
you tabulate the total of all the votes obtained by the 12 candidates, you will get 13 million one two one 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 votes. Is that not correct? My Lord, no, I'm correct. That figure was nowhere in any declaration. No, no, no. I'm, listen to the question. I say, if you tabulate the results obtained by each of the 12 candidates and sum them up, you get a total of 30,121,111. Is that not correct? My Lord, as per... Is that not correct? As per the figures released by the Electoral Commission, that is correct. Okay. Now, you see, therefore, that being the case, you are not permitted to use any other number to calculate the percentages. My Lord, the no, no, no. A simple question. I was not involved in the calculation no, leading no. to the declaration. I, I, I said, look at here, please. Yes. You know, the question is a nation. You don't trade uh, questions with, with, with the lawyer who is co-examining you. He prefaced the. I remember when he was coming to this. He said, "You are a veteran in in elections, and you admitted yes. yes. Who, who in Ghana doesn't know the role you have played?" Yes, uh, yes, my lord. Yeah, that was why he is trying to co examine you. Don't try to, I mean, uh, go wayward as if you are <laughs> engaging him. Yes, my lord, we are all, we are all learning. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if my friend met me in parliament, it would be a different story. <laughs> so, Mr. Sanketia. You admit that it is completely wrong for anybody to use the total votes cast as a basis for determining the percentages of the votes obtained by the different candidates. Yes. Yes. And anybody who does that, his position is cannot be accepted anywhere in Ghana. Yes, my Lord. Yeah. You see? But that is precisely what the petitioner does in paragraph 16 of his petition. You can check it and, and read it out to the court. Read it out. Consequently, if all votes of the Chairman Saf constituency were added to the petitioner's case, uh, uh, were added to the petitioner's vote, second respondent's vote will remain the same at six million seven hundred and thirty thousand. 430 now yielding 49.625 percent, while the votes of petitioner would increase to 6,342,907, now yielding 46.768 percent. And you had see that in paragraph 15, in paragraph 15, I read paragraph 15. Yes. 
The Techiman South constituency has a total registered voter population of 128,018. And if added to the total valid votes announced by Mrs. Jean Adukwe Mensa as cast, i.e. 13,434,574, the resultant figure will now be 13,562,592. You see, I'm putting it to you that the figure 13 million 434 does not represent the total valid votes obtained by the 12 candidates if you do the addition from the announcement, the declaration in your, in your exhibit A. It doesn't. Can you come again, please? I'm saying, I want to hear the question. I'm saying <laughs> that if you do your addition of the votes obtained by each of the candidates as declared by the chairperson of the first respondent, what the, the sum you get is not 13,434,574. It is not. Yes. If you like, we'll give you a, a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that it is not the total valid vote. My Lord, yes, it's not the total valid vote, but we are not claiming that that was the total valid vote. This is a response to uh, the statement made by the uh, self respondent herself as the basis for the declaration of the of the results before taking into account the child's output. So we are again judging her by her own Bible. I don't have a problem with that. But therefore, you cannot use what you know is factually incorrect and not permitted by the rules governing our election as the valid vote, total valid vote cast. You can't use that, even if the EC made that mistake. You can't use that as a basis for your claim. My Lord, as I sit here, I don't know the total valid vote really cast. All the figures are coming from please, the please. first respondent, and that first respondent keep changing those figures. Mr. Nketiah, my question is, please answer my question. Your answer being the case that the 30 million 534 is not the total valid vote. That's, you've admitted that. You can't, I'm putting it to you that you can't use that as a basis, as a denominator for determining the percentages. You come to that, Beku. Why are you behaving like that? Yes. Answer my question. Answer my question. Come again, my lord. I'm saying that you have admitted that the 13 thousand four three four thirty million four hundred and thirty four thousand five hundred and seventy four that the chairperson of the EC announced is in fact not the total valid vote cast and that if you do the tabulation of the actual numbers, votes obtained by each candidate as declared on 9 December, you find out that it is 30,121,111. Yes, I'm just trying to help you understand. Okay, and therefore, and therefore, it is impermissible for you to use this Thirty million three four three four three five seven four. Even if it was used by the EC chair to determine the percentages, my lord, both figures are coming from the same source. I'm, I didn't have to be source. I'm saying 
it is impermissible for you to use it as the total valid vote cast. If the first respondent declares it so, it must be so. So you see, then if the first respondent declares that the second respondent is the winner, it also must be so. No, my lord, because that is why we are here. <laughs> my lord, if the first respondent declares that these are the figures, we are entitled to rely on those figures. And when we find out that the figures are internally inconsistent, we challenge her conclusions and then we come to a forum like this. You see? Um, or otherwise, I have been a banker. When a check is written, please, please, please. and there are problems with the check, please. not one signatory can cancel. You bring it back to the, where the check was written, and all the signatories will, please. will, will cancel and make the corrections. Please. We have stated that please. we yeah. were not part of any attempt. Now, you see, I'm putting it to you that you use this Iranian figure as a basis for calling for your rerun. That's what I'm putting to you. I'm saying that you use the Iranian figure of 30 million, four, three, four, seven, five, four, five, seven, four, as a basis for calling for rerun. That's what you use. Whether it was used by the EC or not, that's what you use. Good. Now, yeah. so can you answer? Yeah, come on again. No, you said, what was your answer? What was the question, sir? <laughs> so I'm saying that you cannot use the manifestly erroneous figure or wrong figure of 13,434,574 as the total valid vote cast to determine the percentages of all the 12 candidates and in particular the second respondent and the petitioner. That's obvious. That we cannot use an erroneous figure. I want to get the question well before I can give you an answer. <laughs> this is the third time I'm asking you. Yes, please do. You cannot use that wrong figure as the total valid votes passed as a basis for your claim that there should be a rerun between the second respondent and the petitioner. My Lord, that is not the only basis for the No, 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 please answer my question. I didn't ask you what other basis. We'll go step by step. Yes, my Lord. Good. Now, Now, you admit that in paragraph 2 of your, no, no, sorry. You admit that the petitioner has been a member of the NDC since its formation in 1992. Since its formation, the NDC's formation in 1992. I beg your pardon, we are referring to... Is that not so? We are referring to the petitioner. The petitioner. Okay. You don't know when... Uh, no, I want to, uh, uh, with the permission of my Lord, refer to the paragraph you are quoting. No. No quoting. I'm asking a general question. Yeah, he's but, been... A, uh, he's but been if, a you, if you think you need to... I mean, refresh. Yeah, he's been a member you of the NDC. Mm -hmm. And naturally, he was 
the NDC's presidential candidate. Yes, my lord. Yes. Now, indeed, in your paragraph two of your witness statement, can you read? Yes. Your paragraph two. Yes. To the whole world. I'm the General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress, the political party on whose ticket petitioner contested as candidate for the office of president in the presidential elections held on 7th December 2020. I testify in support of the petitioner's case as contained in this petition. Yeah. Go on. As General Secretary, said paragraph two. I've uh, finished okay. reading paragraph two. No, I'm putting it to you that as General Secretary of the NDC, you are the coordinator of the general elections, particularly the presidential elections for the NDC. I'm the coordinator of campaigns for the party yes. generally. Yeah. And as coordinator, you coordinate the work of your agents, the agents of the presidential candidates throughout the country, and they report to you in that capacity. Yes, my lord. So, it is correct to say that you had full information on what was going on all over the country during the 2020 presidential elections. My lord, at, if I may find out which information we are relating to. I say inform, relevant information as to how the election was run. Yes, by and large, I have information. And I, I believe that on that basis, you provided petitioner with all relevant information on developments you consider significant, particularly yes, the presidential results. Yes, my lord. As you receive them. Is that not so? Yes, my lord. So, I believe the personnel has trust in you and that with, together with the strategic role you play in coordinating the activities of agents of the petitioner during the elections, he selected you to give evidence in support of his case. Yes, my lord. Now, you remember that when the President of the Republic in July 2018 appointed the current chairperson of first respondent. Your reaction as General Secretary to the appointment was that you were shocked and disappointed because second respondent was a known pro MPP person first respondent was a known pro MPP person the chairperson sorry the chairperson of the first respondent is a known MPP person and an anti NDC person that was your reaction yes my lord those were my words indeed when the first when the first respondent announced that they were going to compile a new voters register. Your party, the petitioner, and you in particular, you strongly resisted saying, alleging among other grounds, that first respondent and the president were colluding to compile a new register to rig the elections. That's what you said. Yes, my lord, and we had grounds to say so. And Indeed, the NDC, of which you are General Secretary, went to court to stop the compilation of a new voters register. Yes, my lord. And even when the plan 
for registration was unveiled. You denigrated it, stating that it was calculated to favor the second respondent. Yes, my lord, and events subsequently vindicated that position. You see, I put it to you that you and your party, including the petitioner, viewed the chairperson of the respondents with jaundiced eyes and had a predetermined position on her alleged lack of neutrality. My lord, we viewed her accurately and saw the reflection of her in our eyes, and that was the basis on which we made those statements. You see? So, it is based on this unfounded prejudice that you have against the first chairman or the first respondent, that you are doing everything to discredit the elections. My Lord, I have not said anywhere that the prejudices are unfounded. I'm saying that they were founded on solid facts. Now, you see, I want you to look at Exhibit 4, attached to the um, first respondent's uh, witness statement. That's why I said. Respectfully, I think we're back to the same problem. Is it going to be put as a, an identified document or what? Because suggesting to you for purposes of identification for the time being that this is the official form 13 B that is the declaration of presidential election results national summary sheet Have you seen it? I haven't seen it. Look at the first respondent's witness statement and look for exhibit is it? four. My Lord, respectfully, it is for the council to put to him whatever document he wants to put to him. Yeah. It's not for him to look for a document. I mean, what is this? First respondent's witness statement is not in evidence. It's not, it's not in evidence yet. I'm not yes. I'm yeah.
my Lord, my first time of seeing <laughs> this document was where it was filed. Very well. We never even, uh, in, I never cited it anywhere. Yes. I have never signed it. The agents at the strong room don't have their signatures here. And the announcement, the declaration that was made on the knife did not relate to any of the figures that I'm seeing here. We'll come, come to that. We'll relax. So you look at the percentage, sorry, the total number of valid votes obtained by the second respondent. What is it? On this, on this document. On this document, yes. I can see 13,121,104. You see, you've also made an error. I said the total valid votes obtained by second respondent. Oh, okay. You see, you have made a mistake. Sorry. <laughs> yes, everybody is capable of making mistakes. Oh, but there are, there are established ways of correcting please, every please, mistake please. in every situation in life. Please go on. Now read to the court the total number of votes obtained by the second respondent. Uh, 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 this, this document is what how uh, the, uh, the witness can be made to be reading numbers from a document that is not in evidence. My Lord, my purpose. Yes. So, very well. Very well. So, you will see, Ms. Enketia, that each of the votes attributed to each of the 12 candidates on this document is exactly what the chairperson of the first respondent declared on 9th December. That's the significance. It's the same. The document is you see, not with me. But that's the problem. You see? You, you, you. No, it's a, a, a good sample. You have to be patient. Very well. Uh, both of you can speak at the same time, or you lose. My Lord, I'm well advised. So I'm saying that in your witness statement, you have attached a video clip of the declaration by the chairperson of the first respondent. Yes. 
Do you want it to be played so that you can refresh your memory? Yes, my lord. Very well. I mean, the, the, the videotape is attached to our evidence. Our, at the appropriate time, it can, my lord, it can be played, but my lord, we need to we need to understand what is the purpose because we, we, we cannot just go on in this manner. When a, a document that we have tendered in evidence, they are going to determine when it is going to be played. Is that is that the procedure? No, of no, no. Be, uh, because you see, there's a problem with this uh, uh, witness statement which has been introduced. Yes, you see. What we normally do, as we've done in this case, is for you to exchange the prospective exhibits. At least they, they, they have a fair knowledge of the exhibits which you intend to tender. Equally so, they also have a fair knowledge of the exhibits which you may tender. So that is why uh, probably you attach it, not to take them by surprise. Yes, and, and they, they, they would want the court to have, uh, sorry, the witness who had it annexed to the, the witness statement to identify it. And I think... Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 please. Now, so, I think... The, no. I think that the issue... The issue is that counsel for the second respondent is showing the witness another document, their document. And he's saying that some information on this document that he's showing him is the same as the information on, that you have exhibited. Yes, but so, my, my lord, respectfully, that document he has said he's seeing for, he saw for the yes, first time. Yes, but you can so, still so ask him. Why is that, why is material from that document being used as if it is in evidence. It is not in evidence. Mr. Yeah. He just wants to show you your own evidence. He, if I remember correctly, he wants to show you your yes, own evidence. He himself, he himself has tended that that exhibit. And so, so, I mean, if he's going to be asked the question about it, the question can proceed. But he's saying that he wants that exhibit to be played at a certain time. And no, I said, because he said he, he doesn't remember the no, contents. No, my lord, he did not say that. He said he was looking for the document. That's what he said. Okay. He didn't say he was not. He okay, did not okay. So, so let him find it, and then we proceed. My lord, I think that it is preposterous for counsel to say that evidence that he has tended I cannot ask the witness to look at that evidence and ask him questions. Not come to that. We are resolving this matter. No, but my lord, this objection has no basis. Very well, my lord. My, my, my submission. No, he said that it is part of the And he's saying that they have not played it yet, so we cannot. When they are finished, they are evidence in chief. Well, not they, they, no, okay. Very well. I think Mr. Kotanko, could you kindly remind me which exhibit type were you referring to? They are exhibit A. Mr. I see don't get exhibit A. Yes, my lord. All right. Thank you.
want to have your witness statement. Yeah, yeah is it not attached to your witness statement? SBA. It's not a petitioner. Yes. Yes.
of the new patriotic party obtained six million seven hundred and thirty thousand four hundred and thirteen votes, being fifty one point five nine five percent of the total valid votes cast. John Dramani Mahama of the National Democratic Congress obtained six million two hundred and fourteen thousand. 889 votes, being 47.366% of the total money votes cast. Christian Kavna Andrews of the Ghana Union Movement obtained 105,565 votes, being 0.805% of the total money votes cast. Alba Kabla Green Street of the Convention's People's Party obtained 12,215 votes, being 0.093% of the total value votes cast. Madame Pepe Adonko of the Ghana Freedom Party obtained 5,575 votes, being 0.042% of the total value votes cast. Henry Herbert Latin of the Great Consolidated Popular Party obtained 3,574, being 0.027% of the total value votes cast. Hassan Ayariga of the All People's Party obtained 7,140 being 0.054% of the total value votes cast. Percival Kofi Apanu of the Liberal Party of Ghana obtained 7,690 votes, being 0.059% of the total value votes cast. David Asidi Akesara of the People's National Convention obtained 10,887 0.083% of the total value votes cast. Bridget Akosla Jiboluku of the Progressive People's Party obtained 6,848 votes, being 0.052% of the total value votes cast. Nana Kunegwa Jiman Rollins of the National Democratic Party obtained 6,612 votes being 0.050% of the total value votes cast. Alfred Kami, I see a worker, independent candidate, obtained 9,703 votes, being 0.074% of the total value votes cast. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, currently the election results we have declared exclude that of the Tejima South constituency, which has a total voter population of 128,018. 128,018. The said election results are not ready because they are being contested. As such, commission has not been completed. It is important to note, however, that the difference between the total number of votes between the first and second candidates is 515,524 votes. As a result, if we were to add the 128,018 full results to the results of the second candidate, it will not change the outcome of the election. Hence, our declaration of the 2020 presidential results without that of teaching myself. Indeed, if you were to add the entire results or to collate all the results from the teaching myself constituency and add that to the, 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 the percentage and the votes of the second candidate, Mr. John Dramani Mahama, he would obtain 47 points. 873% of the total votes cast. And Nana Budampa Kufuado would obtain 50.8% of the total votes cast. 
it is on that basis that we say that the outcome of the election will not change. Hence, our declaration of the 2020 presidential results now that of teaching on South. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on the basis of the foregoing election results, and by the power that said in me as the chairperson of the Electoral Commission of Ghana and the returning officer of the presidential election, it is my duty and honor to declare Nana Abidan Akufuado as president elect of the Republic of Ghana. And the election to be us a working majority in Parliament. So, Mr. Nkatia, you can see that the figures that each of the 12 candidates obtained as announced or declared by the chairperson of the first respondent in her press conference of 9th December are exactly the same as the figures on Exhibit 4. Lord, I repeat my objection that Exhibit 4 is not in evidence. We cannot be making reference to the content of Exhibit it, it 4. It is not coming from the witness in the witness box. No, Exhibit 4 is not Exhibit coming 4. from the witness. Uh, okay. Exhibit 4 is not coming from oh, Okay, I see you. It's not in evidence, and we cannot have its content mm -hmm. just being smuggled in <laughs> when it is not in evidence. Yeah. My, my Lord? No, no, no I, I see your point. I, I thought it, uh, it was the exhibit which... The, but I thought he identified it earlier on. But he said he was seeing it for the first time when it was put in the, in the, in the, in the answer of the respondent. He said so. He didn't identify it. Put up or then lay the proper foundation. Um, well, well. Well, let him In any event, I'm putting it to you that the figures obtained by each of the 12 candidates in what is attached to first respondent's um, witness statement. Mr. Kutoko, why don't you limit yourself to what the witness has tended and which has been shown to us? So, Mr. Nkatia, I'm putting it to do that if you do the maths, which you do so, of the valid votes cast or obtained by each of the 12 candidates, you will get a total of 13,121,111. Yes, uh, about one hour ago. So, so, can you tell the court what is 6,730,400 Mm -hmm. as a percentage of 30,121,111. Give him a calculator. What is 
the votes, the total valid votes obtained by the second respondent, namely 6,730,413 as a percentage of the total valid votes in the whole election, which is 13,121,111. That number is still being taken from a document that is not in evidence. That is still what he's doing, and it's not accepted. This is exactly... That's what the chairperson announced. Yeah. That's what the chairperson yes. announced. We heard it, 13,430 something, we heard it. What she stated, and what she stated was that the total number of valid votes counts is 14, 4, 3, 4. That's what she stated. We all heard it. She stated more than that. She also stated figures for each of the candidates. And this question is that add that one to come to the setting. <laughs> to do the, the percentage in yes. relation to that. Lord, if we can go, we can listen again and take down all the numbers that she actually pronounced and make sure that we cannot use a document that is not in evidence. We can. My Lord, that that number is coming from our witness statement. Yeah. Our witness statement indicates. Our witness statement is actually. Yes, that figure. Yes. Yes, that is right. And that's why I'm saying that if, if he's answering in terms of what we have put in our witness statement, of course that's correct. But we, he keeps going back to his exhibit and that's... No, I don't want... I'm not suggesting that. I, I mean, I have watched it many times. Uh, but if your lordships want to watch it again... No, the, the figures, you are disputing the figures. In your no, exhibit. I'm, my lords, I'm saying that... In our own petition, we have given this figure. And indeed, that is a matter that will become very clear in time. But in our own petition, we actually had this figure. So that was what the witness was referring to. That's what the witness was referring to. And th that he can be cross-examined in relation to it. It's just that we are not talking about an exhibit, something that is not in evidence. Not, with all due respect, I'm hearing some very strange submissions this morning. There's, there, no, there's, there, my Lord, if I may be heard. Hmm. My, my Lord, counsel for petitioner is suggesting, is he suggesting that we can only question the, the witness on things that are in their uh, witness statement or the petition? Is that the suggestion? You're saying that exhibit four, exhibit four. I'm not using exhibit four. Uh -huh. so that I'm using what was uh, that broadcast a few minutes ago, the numbers. Exhibit A. Yes, that's what I'm using. Unless 
also want to suggest. It, it, it's appreciated. It's appreciated. So, but my Lord, counsel is always it, interrupting. It's appreciated. It's appreciated. It's, ab it's appreciated. Let the witness answer. I'm saying, Ms. Anketia, that from the video attached to your witness statement as exhibit A, the total number of valid votes cast in favor of the second respondent is 6 million 730,413. Is that correct? Yeah, I'd like to take the question again. Yeah. I'm saying that from the declaration in the video clip that we just saw, which really is the base of all your case, and you should know the, what is in it. The total number of valid votes that second respondent obtained is 6,730,413. Is that correct? That's correct, my lord. Good. Now, the total number of valid votes that the petitioner obtained from the declaration announcing the exhibit A is 6 million. 204,889. 204, that is so, my lord. And it goes on to the very end in the announcement. I'm also putting it to you, I'm also putting it to you that if you do a sum of all these valid votes, Yes. So, can you tell the court what is 6,730,413 as a percentage of 13,121,111? My Lord, it's 51.29453, add infinitum, so it can be rounded up to 51.295. Very, very good. So 51.295%. Not so. Yeah. Now, now, what about the petitioner? His total valid votes are six million three hundred and fourteen two hundred and fourteen thousand eight hundred and eighty nine. Six million two hundred and fourteen thousand eight hundred and eighty nine. What is this sum as a percentage of thirty million? One hundred and twenty one, one one one. My Lord, it's four forty seven point three six five five six nine ad infinitum, so it can be rounded up to forty seven point three six six. So you admit that from the first you admit that from 
the chairperson of first respondents declaration on 9th December. Second respondent crossed the more than 50% threshold. From the declaration as announced, from the figures that we just calculated, these figures which were announced, if you do them as a percentage of the actual valid, total valid votes, these are the percentages you get for first, for the petitioner and second respondent. That's what I'm putting to you. Uh, but we've fought. Yes. Okay. So I'm saying that from the calculation of the percentages of first petitioner and second respondent, second respondent clearly crossed the 50, more than 50 percent threshold. Well, if the figures are correct, yes. From your own experience. Now, again, you see that when you calculated the percentage for the second respondent, you came to a figure of 51,295. Not so. Yes, I'm, I'm just emphasizing it for, for my next question. Now, yes, my lord. You, you notice that when the chair of the EC was orally proclaiming this, she said 51.592. Not so. 592, please. That's what she said. That's what she said, not so. I can't remember what she actually said. I think she said five, nine. I don't know what that. She said, can we, can we play that? Can we play it back? Looking back. Okay. But you, are, you use that argument to arrive at your more than 100 percentage. So you know it. Yes, I want it to be played back. Obtained 7,690 votes. 
total number of Please, candidates cast. Go back. Go back. This is not four hundred and thirty-four thousand. Yeah. Okay, please. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the election was conducted in 38,622 polling stations across the country and in 275 constituencies. I'll now turn my attention to the reason why we are here. At the end of a transparent, fair, orderly, and timely and peaceful presidential election, the total number of valid votes cast was 13,434,574, representing 79% of the total registered voters. Permit me to present the results in the order of appearance on the 2020 presidential ballot. At the end of the polls, Nana Adudankwa Akufuadu of the New Patriotic Party obtained 6,730,413 votes, being 51.595% yeah, of the total valid votes cast. John Drama? So, you can see from the announcement of the percentage that an obvious error was made by the chairperson of the first respondent. Is that not so? My Lord, your question was for me to admit that the first respondent announced 51 percent, 200, uh, uh, 51 point two, uh, nine, uh, uh, five nine two, yes. instead of two nine five. Yeah. But it's right my Lord, five. that is wrong. It's five, nine, five. actually mentioned. Uh, 51.595, yes, yes. not 295. So I'm saying that from the actual calculation of the percentage, which you just did before this court, that was an error. You agree? Yes, the percentage announced was an error. Yes. But the true, the correct percentage shows that the second respondent had crossed the 50% plus threshold. Well, if all the figures are to be believed. Yes, okay. So now, let's look at the press release of 10th December. Mm -hmm which you have attached to your witness statement as, as your exhibit B. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm putting it to you that if you add all the valid votes obtained by the 12 presidential candidates, you get a total figure of 30,119,460. But that excludes Techiman South, of course. My Lord, I want to read with the... You do that, this one.